Hello and happy Monday. Today is Mondays with Mallory. I'm Mallory Perry. I'm the Assistant Director of the Moon and Perry Historical Society. And we decided that we would do a virtual tour of the museum since we are unable to have it open for visitors. So our museum, our, our headquarters, is this building. Uh, we are now calling it the McRitchie Hollis Museum. Uh, it's a 74 Jackson, and it was designed by Keenan Perry, uh, who was a very prolific architect throughout Newman and Atlanta. He designed this Tudor home right here, and actually I'm kind of having a fight with this lady that lives in that house. Not really a fight, but she says that Keenan Perry is a Georgia Tech graduate. I say that he is an Auburn graduate. Hello, y'all. So we are 74 Jackson, and this is 75 Jackson, which is owned by the Thompson family still today. This was a Keenan Perry design of the 1920s. And the lady that built our house, Mildred Arnold Peniston, grew up in this house here. So the Thompson family prints our newspaper, the New Times Herald, and this house is the uh, now the headquarters for their real estate company, 75 Properties. If you go a little further up 29, that's what this street is, to Platinum Point, there's a huge, huge tutor there. That's also, it's called Guild Hall. It used to be Noonan's largest home at 11,000 square feet. I think it still is the largest. Keenan Perry also designed the hospital, which is now the University of West Georgia. And there's our weird magnolia tree. So this house was built 1937 at a cost of $25,000 and most of the houses back then in Newman cost around $4,000. It is said that there's not a house in Newnan that has not been touched by the R.D. Cole Manufacturing Company and so this house, all the lumber, the windows, uh, that iron ball strayed, everything, uh, they were known for their extensive mill work. So I want to point something out to you before we go inside. This palmette which we took as our logo that was a wooden carving that was then made into a mold and then the, all of these lintel moldings are cast uh, concrete. It's way up in the top, uh, the, that's cast iron, the vents, that, that's how the house was cooled. There's a huge attic fan. And then the balustrade was also, there's the palmette there, it's also created by the R.D. Cole Manufacturing Company. They started out as a lumber mill. They got into lots of different things, windows, uh, they got into metal fabrication. They designed our courthouse and all of the copper cornices of the courthouse were manufactured just blocks away from where they were installed, uh, which is across from the depot. And um, that's an elongated palmette. I'll show you a couple of other. So once again, we have very extensive millwork throughout here, the Greek key border, and then this lovely molding detail above the doorway. So the house uh, has four bedrooms and six bathrooms. Now the mural here in the foyer is not original, but it is of the period. And it was done in the style of an artist named Athos Minaboni who came from Italy to New York, where he met with zero success. And then he went to Tampa, Florida, and the hurricane of 1926 put a kibosh on everything business-wise in South Florida. And then he came to Atlanta. And he met, he met Philip Tremel Schutze, who was an architect. And Mr. Schutze saw his work and said, oh, well, I, I can keep you busy all day long. And he did. So he's a very prolific muralist uh, in Atlanta, including Swan House. But he and his wife, they both lived to be in their 90s, and they loved wildlife, especially birds. So even in their midtown apartment, they were rehabilitating injured birds. And they eventually um, got five acres in Sandy Springs where they could, uh, they could help even more wildlife. So when you do come to the museum, after this is all over, uh, we can identify these birds. I had a little eight-year-old homeschool kid who said, told me, that's a ring-necked pheasant. And I was like, yes, you're right, it is. So the couple, the married couple that built the house were, were Ellis Hardiman Penniston, this is his picture, and his wife, Mildred Arnold Penniston. So the Arnold name is very well known in Noonan. Actually, um, 
Ellis's family arrived in Noonan in 1828. So soon after the county was formed. But when they came here, they were not the Pennistons. They were the Smiths. That's Edgar, I'll tell you more about it. He just had a birthday, we celebrated that. Lamar Dodd painting. Uh, so Ellis's father was Paul Smith, he was a doctor. And when he became a doctor early in his practice, there were five other Paul Smiths within the county. And he said, and three of them were doctors. So he said, I've got to change my name. So he went to Peniston, which was his mother's maiden name. So that is a picture of Susie Thomason on the staircase. Now, before we go into the library, just let me tell you a little bit further about how this house came to be and all of that. Um, so Mildred and Ellis had no children. And Mildred died first and then Ellis died in 1963 and they left it to Susie Thomason. And by that time she was married to Dr. Thomason and had three children and uh, then another one, they, they moved in here. So four children grew up in this house. So then in 1986, they sold the house to the city of Noonan and it became the uh, administrative offices for the hospital right next door. And I don't know when they moved out, but of course they built the lovely uh, hospital at whatever exit, new exit that is. Um, but I wanna tell you something before we go into this room. So when we, we got the property, I think it was in 2012. So that's a pocket door there. And so we did some rehabilitation and did things like the fire suppression and the handicap access. And of course we had a grand opening and we invited the Thomason family. And one of the Thomason daughters said, oh my gosh, I never knew this was a pocket door. I thought it was the wall because her father used this. This was her dad's study. And so they weren't really supposed to go in there. So um, that's kind of interesting. I want to uh, show you two books that we have. We do have a pretty decent bookstore of historic uh, items. This book was published in 1928. This one was published in the 80s. Uh, we have um, several marriage books uh, that you can cross-reference. So um, this one retails for 50, this one retails for 70. But so if you want to learn more about the history of Coweta County, the Historical Society has done a lot of work for you. So this is the study. This is really my favorite room. It's so cozy, has a lot of books, and I love books. They're all Edgars. Uh, this is totally um, paneled in English walnut, very valuable wood. We have a first edition Mark Twain, Life on the Mississippi, a first edition Mark Twain humor book. We have a third edition, Gone with the Wind, which um, was published for the first time. Two printings in June of 1936, then there was a printing in July, and then we have the August printing. Um, those cups that are way up high, those are barber cups. And so when a young man started working, he would be gifted this and it was customized with his name and his profession. And it would live at the barber shop. So I guess this is their way of being hygienic because they could, um, they could sterilize the blade that, that they would shave your beard with, but they could not sterilize the bristles, of course, that they would mix up the shaving foam. So that's how they remained hygienic. Uh, Edgar Hollis, this is his picture. He is our major benefactor and for his generosity, uh, we named the museum after him. So it's called McRitchie Hollis. His mother was a McRitchie. And she was also related to the Berries, who uh, also were one of the original founding families of Noonan in uh, 1828. So uh, Edgar Hollis graduated from Noonan High, went to Emory, and then um, had a career in Washington, D.C. for the U.S. military. He was an archivist for many, many years. And upon his death in 2006, he left us his a lot of his furnishings, his house. He left us 40 years worth of letters between his parents that they wrote each other weekly. And um, so we are archiving them and transcribing them. Uh, this is his mother's coat of arms. Please note the black cat. Um, I've never seen that in heraldry, but I did look it up and it's not common, but it does occur. It just means be vigilant, which is 
what the majority of um, the taglines are on heraldry. Be prepared, stuff like that. So Edgar also uh, was a real Anglophile. He loved all things British and he did a lot of geneal genealogy on his family. But um, this is, he has a set of coronation cups. So whereas we would print a t-shirt or something like that, the English would print teacups. This is Elizabeth's coronation cup back in the 50s. This is her grandparents, George and Mary. And if he, that guy looks familiar, it, he looks like the Tsar of Russia. Well, they were, they were cousins, so that's why. And then here is Edward. This one is the most valuable because it says the coronation of His Majesty King Edward VIII. And he was never coronated. He abdicated for his love for Wallace Simpson, the American divorcee, twice divorced. And, but they, they had everything ready. They had all the plates and thimbles and all this stuff printed up. So to make the, anyway, he decided he didn't want to be king because he couldn't live without Wallace. So this actually ended up being a good thing because he was actually a Nazi sympathizer and England didn't need that in the war, World War II. So here is the book, his book, A King's Story, The Memoirs of His Royal Highness, the Duke of Windsor, right next to his cup. So actually we need the coronation of coronation cup of King George, which was Elizabeth's father. They had the coronation already planned out. They just went ahead with it and just coronated King George instead of King Edward. So we haven't had a coronation in almost 70 years, but we do have royal weddings. And so they are still making this kind of stuff today. This, this is my cup. I, don't, I think my mother gave me this. So another um, feature of this room is the uh, picture of Ellis Arnold. He was governor of Georgia when he was in the 1946, I think he was elected. And so this is right after World War II. So he's a Noonan native, and he, at the time of his election, he was the youngest governor in the whole of the United States. He was 35 years old. So this is right after the war. That is, that is the Murano glass lamp that is making the reflection in there. But one of the things that he did uh, was the voting age was 21 years old. And he thought that that was terrible, um, that you know we could send young men to war at 18, draft them, but they couldn't vote. So he lowered the voting age to 18, that Georgia was the first state to do this. And it took another 22 years before that amendment was passed. So one of the other things that he had to deal with when he was elected governor is the previous governor, Talmadge, had somehow done something, I'm not sure what it was, to make all of the universities in Georgia non-accredited. So he had to clean that up. Um, but there is, I think you learned this in eighth grade history, there's a period of time, it's 1947, where three guys were claiming to be the governor of Georgia. Ellis Arnold was one of them. So your, your assignment today is to do a little research on that and find out that whole story. One of the guys actually locked Ellis Arnold out of his office. And uh, of course, there's always an interesting story behind things like that. But his picture is here because, of course, the Arnold name is a very big name in, in Noonan. They, they arrived here in 1844. And Mildred, who built our house, was an Arnold. So that is why we have his picture here. And so here is our lovely garden outside. And you can kind of see a two-story brick building. That is our archive. So as I mentioned before, we are going to celebrate our 50th anniversary in the end of 2021. And we are trying to start a docent program. So if you are a lover of history, we would love to teach you. We need your help. We're scheduling a lot more group tours and um, we need more staffing to run these. We are, and not just about this house, we did to our, our tour is a lot longer than this. It covers the formation of the county and also the creation of the great wealth that was Noonan that started really with the mills that were uh, built in 1866. So we um, were set, was set up for a party that we had and we were gonna have another party, so we just left everything up. But that got put on 
pulled, of course. One thing I wanted to tell you, though, this is for the people who love words, the etymologists out there. The word quarantine comes from the Venetian word quarantina, which actually uh, was to designate the 40-day period that ships had to stay at port without disembarking, without unloading cargo, uh, and this was during the Black Plague. So this is not something new. Hope that you guys are making the best of us, and uh, please contact us to find out about further docent trainings.